There we go. This property, all these trees belong to a really good friend of mine, actually. Well, I guess more importantly, he's the father-in-law, my best friend. So when he asked me to clean up some of these trees because they were getting dangerous for his property, for people on his property, that's uh, obvious. Yes, of course. Now the thing about felling trees, and I've learned a lot about myself, is there's a limit to what I can do. Some of these trees, simply put, are too dangerous for me. So he's got to bring in somebody who knows more than me. And he got me thinking about one of the truly magnificent chapters of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. And almost everyone knows this. It's not even Christians. Chapter 7 is such an important part of the way we see each other in our world that almost everybody knows bits and pieces of it. It starts with a with a reminder not to judge others, not to condemn others, or you'd be condemned yourself. Everybody knows that. We hear it all the time. In the same beautiful four verses, Jesus goes on to give one of the funniest parables I think he has in all, them, all the Gospels. He says more or less, well, I can read it for you. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye but do not notice the log in your own eye? And how can you say, how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is still in your, eye, your own eye. <laughs> I don't know how you get a log in your eye, but I suspect as a carpenter's son, he knew an awful lot about getting wood chips and dust and stuff in his eyes. He'd experienced it. And the point is well taken. Before we can help anybody else, we have to help ourselves. We have to sort ourselves out. You know, today, as this COVID crisis goes on, we know, for example, that, uh, that families are struggling. In the last few months, I can't, I can't count on both hands the number of people I've, whose families are breaking up. Ask my son and his nursing friends or any of his colleagues, they'll tell you that the, the rates of domestic violence and abuse where kids are concerned are, are growing, becoming more obvious to all of us. That's not a judgment. It's not a condemnation of those who are doing it. It's an observation of the facts. No one at the start of this year predicted that this world was going to end up this way. The challenge with living in our world right now, right here and right now, is that this is an invitation to become a little more introspective about who we are. To notice our own demons. One of the great joys in my life is when people ask me for help. The reason I can answer that is because people have helped me. I've had friends come out of the woodwork from a decade ago that a simple walk to a doctor's office or, a, or an honest conversation led them to a life of sobriety. I still had other friends who, who I've met in their darkest hours. I mean, I, I've been in the backseat of a police car with a friend, talk him down from the chaos that was going on in his life, save his family, his marriage. And that's really the beautiful point, and that's, in my mind at least, the whole point of his cleaning out the speck. Yes, we all have logs in our eyes. Yes, we all have stuff in our eyes. But Jesus will end the parable with, and then go and help your friend. This is a time in our lives where we need to speak faithfully as brothers and sisters, as friends, to those we love. To spare them the chaos of their own stress to speak in love and charity and courage and truth, to judge the actions, not the person. If you're struggling, you can say, for example, I know lots of people, are, the naysayers to this are gonna say, well, that's easy. No, it's not easy. I never said it was easy. None of this is easy. Talking about it's not easy, let alone confronting it, dealing with your own demons in your own life. None of it's easy, but it's worth it. It's hard work. It's what makes us who we are. We weren't made, to paraphrase Pope Benedict, we weren't made for comfort, we we're made for excellence. If you're struggling, whether it's financially and that's leading to all the chaos and anarchy in your family, or you're struggling with addictions, or you're, you're struggling with the way you fight with your, the people you love the most, then find that friend, find that person who will help you find the tools you need to get through this. Don't do this on your own. Christ was smart enough to pick 12 disciples to help him. And he's the son of God, so I'm not ashamed to ask for help. Like I've told the owner of this place, my friend, there's a lot of trees around here I'll knock down. There's some I can't touch for him. 
I don't have the skill sets to do it, but I know the people who do. I'll go find them. I say the same thing about the challenges we have at home and our families. Your friends, your pastor, your doctor may not have the skills to deal with what you're dealing with, but they'll know people who do. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your family. And don't give up on those who are trying to help you. Christ never gave up on you, never gave up on his disciples, and never gave up on me. And I'm not about to do the same. Amen.